So, I thought I had Remora footage before, but it turned out to be a shark sucker, which does look like a Remora. That said, this appears to be a first time capture for us, complete with a short story about how it was looking for a host in open water, just as our group began a safety stop. It did attach to an unsuspecting diver's tank for a short while, and he was quite surprised to have cameras pointed at him. But someone in the group persuaded the Ramora to look elsewhere. Let's keep the first time captures rolling. These are two purple crowned sea goddesses that Leslie found. They appeared to be in a train, or one was towing the other, which seemed like odd behavior. But hey, you don't have to understand it to enjoy it. This rainbow parrotfish looked a bit different because the coloring was not complete and the tail was more square. Turns out it was in the intermediate phase. We've not seen anything but terminal phase adults before this. Another first time capture was this gorgeous lined seahorse. On the same dive, we saw this long snout seahorse, which are typically the ones we see. So thanks to Yolanda from Go With Yo Diving for sharing this beauty. While this is a first time capture, we're not sure this spot fin goby is all that uncommon. To be honest, we're just trying to get better at goby and blenny identification. As far as behaviors go, We've seen hunting teams before, and there are certainly pairs of animals that work together for their mutual benefit. That said, we're not exactly sure what's going on here. Every time the box crab stopped for a second, the barjack gave it a nudge, almost as if it was trying to herd the box crab. Finally, the box crab had enough and just buried itself. We saw this activity one morning, very close to shore. It was a school of bluehead wrasse in their initial phase, and every few seconds, a small group would break off, swim up in the water column, and release gametes. It was very cool to watch. Unfortunately, heart corals are experiencing multiple issues this year, from the slow pace of stony coral tissue loss disease, to the current bleaching event, which should hopefully get better when the water cools down, and an increased presence of cyanobacterial mat. On top of all that, this is what black band disease looks like. It's not nearly as pervasive, but just more evidence of the amount of stress the reefs are currently under. That isn't to say the diving here isn't still beautiful, but it's an opportunity to explore other underwater parts of the island. For example, the northern sites are really very different environments from a coastal perspective, and the waves crashing in are amazing. We could watch those all day. Finding unique sponge and coral shapes is fun as well. These sea rods looked very strange growing at right angles. They reminded us of either a candelabra or a rake. Getting back to reef creatures, Leslie found this sponge peppermint shrimp just rocking back and forth in a stovepipe sponge. All it needed were tiny little headphones. That particular dive was sweet, because we also saw a peppermint basslet swimming around in a protected coral alcove. Okay, so we've shown horse hijacks before, but this was the largest school we've ever seen, just swimming in the open water over the reef. Several different kinds of conchs make their home on Bonaire. But it's been a while since we've seen a rooster tail conch, which are notable for their elongated ends. We always seem to have at least one very quick encounter in these videos, and this ciliated false sequela is it. It's a type of mantis, and was crossing the shallows using coral rubble for protection. Staying with small things for a little bit, this Atlantic Creole fish was swimming around with two cymothoid isopods attached, one on either side of its head. We don't see them on every dive, but perhaps once a week or so. Sometimes, the small things aren't out in the open, and you have to go looking for them. This young file clam was nestled pretty deep behind some starlet coral. On the larger end of the spectrum, this three-foot-long blue-spotted cornet fish swam with some purpose across the reef, so we were lucky to catch it as it passed by. By contrast, 
This golden Kone could not have been a better model, as it not only settled in the perfect pose, but then backed up to ensure nothing was blocking the camera. Hinds are kind of uncommon on Bonaire, and those we do see are typically red hinds, so seeing this rock hind was a special treat. In case you're interested, red hinds have dark coloring on their dorsal and tail fins, while rock hinds do not. We caught a glimpse of a batwing coral crab hiding, but not good enough. We first spotted it through some gorgonians, but then saw there was a nice opening in the coral from above. The last highlight is this school of intermediate phase yellowtail parrotfish cruising across the reef. I was trying to find an elegant way to tie in the fact that parrotfish produce sand, these were swimming in single file, and sand people always ride in single file to hide their numbers. But I couldn't, so you'll have to settle for this convoluted reference instead. Sorry. And with that, we'll close out the best of October. If you enjoy the lame humor, fun facts, or just seeing all the uncommon and unique encounters that can happen on Bonaire with the sound off, please consider subscribing to our channel. We would appreciate that very much. Thanks! Adorable little baby smiley faces. <laughs>